Hi you guys, it's Amanda with Healthy House on the block here and this week I'm here talking to you about a specific toxin. We're going to do a deep dive into PVC toxins or polyvinyl chloride toxins. Same thing, um, just a shortened name of PVC. And so we're going to go through this toxin, find out where it is in your home. We're going to talk about the health um, effects that it has on our bodies, especially our kiddos. And I'm going to talk about how we can replace different products in our home with something that is PVC free. So PVC, polyvinyl chloride, is a toxin that is in a lot of plastics. Um, if you have been following um, any any topics on this, you know that it has been banned from kids toys specifically however um, it is still present in older toys that your children might use and it is still present in um, products that our kids use so PVC is uh, in plastics and generally it's in harder plastics um, however it can be found in things that are soft such as shower curtains, rain gear, um, like rain boots, rain coats that we put on our kids or ourselves. Um, and so it can be found in just a variety of things. I was actually very surprised when I started going through the list of things that um, it can be found in in our homes. Um, so I'm gonna take you through some slides later on in this video and we're gonna talk about the specific health effects of um, PVC and what it does to our body um, and how it affects different parts of our body and different parts of our kids' bodies. Um, I'm going to talk about different ways that we come in contact with PVC, um, specifically those three those three main ways, um, inhalation, ingestion, and then absorption. So we'll talk about that. And then I'll, um, I have in a blog post that this video goes with, um, links to products that are PVC free. So, um, like I said, shower curtains is a huge one. If you can get a PVC free shower curtain, go for it. I would say like a natural linen, a natural cotton hemp is a really great option for a shower curtain. I have some of those, I have an option listed for you. So you can just follow the link at the bottom of this video. It will bring you to the blog post. Um, but, uh, so shower curtains are a big one, you know, anywhere you can replace plastic with a natural material. So glass, wood, um, in the kitchen, it's going to be maybe like some silicone. Um, and I talked about that a couple weeks ago, how that is a great replacement, but we still have to be careful. Um, silicone in something that's not going to be heated is obviously going to be ideal. Um, so silicone, um, food bags and storage bags, um, switching out your plastic wrap that you put on your, um, food for maybe like a beeswax, which you can make your own. Um, I have linked to that before as well. And if you're looking for a specific link on how to make your own, please let me know. I will share with you a tutorial that I had found. Um, so there's a lot of things that we can do to replace the plastics in our home. Metal is another option, you know, if we're looking at um, plastic cups, plastic silverware, um, disposable, we can go with something that is more natural, like a stainless steel water bottle. Um, you can use silicone straws. There is cutlery, like if you're looking for disposable. So, you know, if you're having people over, not all of us want to be sitting in the kitchen doing dishes afterwards, nor maybe do we even have um, a set of dishes that's big enough for the number of people coming over. And so disposable is a is a good option. Well, now they make recyclable um, and it's made of like bamboo um, or other natural materials instead of plastic that contains PVC that we're eating off of. Same with like if you're going to send silver with your kids to school. I personally send the real silverware. We've only had, I think, one thrown away. So I feel like it's a win for us. Um, but if you don't want to send your real silverware, get something that's biodegradable, that is natural, that doesn't have toxins. And I have those linked as well. So let's go through the slides, talk about PVC toxins in a deeper sense. Um, let's talk about, you know, what it's doing to our homes and our bodies. And then let's talk about how we can replace all of these toxic products and um, switch over our materials to something more natural. All right, so let's talk about polyvinyl chloride toxins, um, sometimes referred to as PVC, um, and we're going to do a deep dive of this toxin in our homes. So first, let's talk about what 
is a PVC toxin or what are they? Um, so PVC toxins or polyvinyl chloride, it's a type of plastic um, commonly known as vinyl. It is one of the most widely used plastics in our society. Um, chlorine is a really big component of this within the PVC that makes it such a toxic material. Um, the PVC toxins such as chlorine not only have a huge impact on our environment, but a wide array of health effects on ourselves. Um, another one of the PVC toxins that is present is dioxin. Dioxin is um, unintentionally created whenever a chlorine-based chemical is produced, used, or burned. Um, there's evidence that dioxin is actually in the polyvinyl chloride material as well, and it, that it never leaves the product. Um, another uh, component of this is phthalates. I talked about this a couple weeks ago. It's used in many types of polyvinyl chloride um, as well as other PVC toxins and it is um, linked to several different issues including hormone disruption. Um, but because plastic and vinyl are such complex materials with a variety of additives, there's possibly even more chemicals that are in polyvinyl chloride. And one that they've been studying lately is lead and cadmium, um, which are poisonous, especially to children. So here are the ways that we come into contact with um, PVC toxins. So first is ingestion. Um, it's probably the most harmful way that we come into contact with uh, toxins. And this is through swallowing food or water that's contaminated with P PVC or has been wrapped in like a PVC packaging or PVC plastic or stored in a PVC container. Um, the second most harmful way is through inhalation. And this um, this happens with PVC in various products that are in your home. So sometimes there's like a fine amount of dust from the materials like um, that are in our homes, different products in our homes that end up in um, the dust that is airborne in our house. And, and then finally, we have absorption, which is through us just handling plastics. Um, this is going to be the main way that children um, come in contact with PVC toxins because they have... Um, a large amount of their toys, a large amount of their um, food, like storage or utensils is going to have plastic on it. And so absorption is going to be um, the main way that children come into contact with this toxin. So um, health effects of PVC toxins are um, Lots of them. I'm going to go through just a few of them. And I have all of the studies linked in my blog post um, if you are interested in that. Uh, so exposure to PVC toxins and polyvinyl chloride means that there's also exposure to phthalate, phthalates, um, which I talked about a month ago. Phthalates are linked to abnormal reproductive development and neurological toxicity in both kids and adults. Um, it's also really harmful when it comes to like prenatal exposure um, as well as the endocrine system. So a really interesting study that was done um, made a direct link between the additives in polyvinyl chloride products that kids are in contact with on a regular basis um, and they linked it to the negative health effect um, specifically in ages like 4 through 11 um, pertaining to childhood obesity. Um, so I have that study linked for you guys. PVC toxins also contain um, synthetic estrogen and other hormone disrupting agents. Um, and so they, they primarily disrupt hormone production, um, kind of alter it. And then it was also linked to cancer, um, which I have that study linked on the blog post as well if you'd like the um, research on that. Um, so who's at the greatest risk um, for health effects from PVC toxins? That would be our kids. Kids and babies um, are definitely the top priority when we start thinking about this. A lot of it has to do with their poor hand-to-mouth habits. I mean, kids have their hands in their mouths. They put toys in their mouths um, all the time. And so it allows for that number one way of exposure through ingestion. Um also, their bodies are just smaller and children are more susceptible to PVC toxins in terms of like brain development and function. Uh, a lot of their toys also have PVC toxins in them because they are made of plastic. If we think about like toys, bottles, dishes, 
all of those things. Um, and kids generally spend a lot of time on the ground touching various objects and mouthing toys. Um, this leads to direct ingestion of the chemicals, and I have a fact sheet linked um, if you're interested in that in the blog post. So let's take a look at this nice long list of all the places that PVC is in our homes. And I mean, this is a lot of things, and this is just scratching the surface in my opinion. Um, there's a lot that is in our homes that contains polyvinyl chloride, that contains PVC toxins that's, that are made of plastic. And some of these things might be really difficult for you to change, maybe like your windows, um, flooring, water piping. But if you also look at the list, there are a lot of things that you can change. Um, so how do we avoid these PVC toxins? First and foremost, I think finding the plastics that you can replace. A lot of times this is in our kitchen, uh, looking at our food storage containers and opting for things like glass, wood, metal, silicone is a great replacement uh, if you're not heating it up. And then the second way is look at the um, label on the plastic containers. If it has a PVC or a V in the middle of that little recycle triangle, it's made of polyvinyl chloride and I would try to avoid it if you can. Can't always do that. Um, so just Avoid it where you can. That's going to be the best solution. Another solution is, you know, each time, say you're going to go buy a new box of snack bags, buy a silicone bag instead um, and gradually replace them so you have, you know, a decent amount that you could just completely forego the snack bags. Um, and then make a plan. So you can make like a long-term plan on replacing different things in your house that are made of PVC toxins, shower curtains, you know, just make it a choice. Next time I buy a shower curtain, I'm not going to buy a plastic one. Um, things like that. But having a list so that you remember and you know what you're going to be replacing next is really helpful. So um, on the blog, I'm just sharing this this image with you. On the blog this week, I have all of these items linked. They're all PVC free. Um, things like kitchen containers, uh, even like recyclable, like cutlery, um, diaper bags. You know, a lot of times that little section that is waterproof has PVC in it. Um, a lot of, you know, strollers, baby carriers, those all have PVC as well. And I have, um, alternatives linked for you as well as cleaning supply bottles, uh, glass cosmetic containers, mattress covers, all kinds of things. So, that is everything um, that you could get started with if you wanted to make the choice to go PVC free. So that's it. Um, everything that you kind of need to know about PVC toxins. Um, if you're looking for specific links to the studies that I mentioned in these slides, please go to my website um, and I will link this post in the bottom of this video. It will bring you to the blog post and I have cited all of my sources. So I want you guys to know that this is not just my opinion. Um, this is not just me taking someone else's opinion. These are from studies and research um, papers that have been written and done on PVC toxins. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, if you have any questions, please reach out to me either by email, um, my website or my social media channels. I am more than happy to answer any questions that you might have or help you find products that are PVC free. Or if you're having trouble finding a product, a specific thing in your home that um, doesn't contain PVC toxins, let me know. I'd be glad to research it for you. Um, otherwise I will be back again next week with another healthy home topic for you guys.